Well, here on TT Style, we like to think we have a little bit of fashion sense, but today we are in for a treat, a lesson on how fashion has changed through history, thanks to the Connecticut Historical Society. Collections associate Karen DePau is here today to tell us a little bit more about how fashion has evolved in our state over the past century and show us some uh, pretty unique examples of clothing that our grandmothers, our mothers, our great grandmothers <laughs> might have worn. Welcome to CT Style. Thanks so much for having me today. Uh, so we really can learn a lot about history when we check out the coordinating outfits, right? We can. A lot of times fashion becomes kind of the personification of what's going on in society and culture at any given time. So you can kind of see how how things like women's freedom and abilities kind of change over time as we look at what they were wearing and how that changed. And uh, you take this on the road with you, not necessarily the outfits, but you do take the presentation. Correct. We do a PowerPoint presentation called From Bonnets to Bell Bottoms, and it's a century of Connecticut fashion, and we kind of draw you in with pretty pictures, and then we leave <laughs> you with some content of history and what was going on in Connecticut at the times. So let's uh, start with what you brought way on the end here, probably the oldest out of the, the collection. It is. So the first outfit at the end there is from around 1900. And it's what's known as a shirtwaist is the top piece. Um, and the shirtwaist and skirt actually kind of became the jeans and t-shirt of ah, the I turn see. of the century. Um, it was a very easy garment to keep clean. I know it sounds so odd to us because we think of white things as what you wouldn't want to wear if you're going to go outside and do some work. Um, but for them, they were able to use their harsh lye soaps. You could use bleach and things to get that clean in a way that you couldn't do with colored fabrics at the time. Sure. And so, uh, there's a picture, too, though, from the same era. Yes. Oh, yep. how So pretty. this is kind of the ball gown equivalent yeah, of the same period. So this is that. what she'd wear during the day, and that's what she'd For her night out, up. right? Yes. Uh, the Something. next item is looks like something we would even wear today. I mean, all of these fashions are kind of coming back. Yeah, it's so interesting to think about how nothing is really ever new anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so the next piece is actually from the 1920s. And so you can see certainly how just wearing this sort of a dress with a simple silhouette, you wouldn't need a corset and all those petticoats that you would have needed 20 years beforehand. So suddenly you can do things like run and have some fun. Breathe. Um, <laughs> right, breathe, walk upstairs holding something because you don't have to hold your skirts anymore. So it certainly made an impact this kind of what we usually term as the flapper fashions. Yeah, in fact, uh, we have another picture from the 20s we'll put up on the screen. Yep. Oh, that goes, I could see a flapper yeah. wearing that, right? Exactly, that's kind of her equivalent of her party dress and that's a hand beaded snake all down the side of that. It's Ooh. a beautiful dress. And this last one, I feel like I would, I would wear today. It's fantastic, from yeah, the certainly. 1950s. Yes, yeah, certainly with a little jean jacket, How pair cute. of heels. <laughs> so one of my favorite things about the 1950s actually is that in the 1940s we had so many restrictions because we were in the depths of World War II mm -hmm. and one of those restrictions was actually on fabric. It was illegal to have full skirts, it was illegal for men to have um, double-breasted suits. So once they lifted those restrictions, mm -hmm. suddenly when someone tells you you can't do something for seven years, you suddenly start doing it. <laughs> you make very full skirts. Yes, so in the 1950s we go back to that tiny waist and that very full skirt that we had seen even 100 years before this in the 1860s. This was kind of the silhouette only a lot longer. So we've mm -hmm. shortened it up, modernized it, and kind of played around with it some. Very good. Well, let's take a look at a picture we have from the 50s. Oh, same idea with the full skirt. Yep, you can see it so again. So adorable though. Aren't those great? I love these kind of full skirted dresses and so many of these pieces kind of come back and we're actually Absolutely. doing, um, on May 9th, we're doing a fashion show called Oat History, which is a vintage inspired fashion show. We're going to have a little pop-up exhibition of costumes from the 1910s through the 1970s. And then along with that, we're kind of going to provide the, some images of that era mm -hmm. for the local retailers who are partnering with us to then create modern outfits around these inspiration pieces. Sounds so fascinating. And Karen, how do you store all this at the Historical Society? Yeah, well, we have a large storage facility at the Historical Society. It's all temperature and humidity controlled, which ah. is very important for making sure that these textiles last for hundreds and hundreds of years. And we store them also in acid-free tissue paper and acid-free boxes. Because um, sometimes if you pull out an old piece from a chest, you'll see little black spots and little brown spots all sure. over it. And that's actually the acid leaching out from the wood and staining the fabric. So we want to make sure that we're not putting anything in contact with anything harmful. Very good. You're quite the expert on this. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of the information. Of course, oh, you yeah. could log on to the website at the Connecticut Historical Society, which is? Yep, chs.org. And you can check out our calendar for a little more information on the fashion show. And also the calendar will have the times that we're doing the bonnets to bell bottoms in your area open to the public. Very nice. Thanks again for being here.